we're going to start a uh, next next week we'll be discussing major raises and we will the week after that merge the major raises into some more two over one bidding with an emphasis on slam bidding and um, and then that will wrap up the class maybe three more weeks or so but I wanted to give a preview movie of Bergen raises Bergen raises are used over a major opening they're used to show four or more Trump okay four or more Trump in support they're used to show either a constructive hand an invitational hand or a weak hand, a preemptive hand. Okay, and they do that by using an artificial bid at the three level. Okay, and we're jumping to the three level because we have the extra trump, and we're basically saying we're safe there. Now, experts rarely use this convention, but I find it helpful, and I found it helpful, and I never regret playing it. It's kind of fun to play. Um, knowing you have nine cards makes it a lot easier for us as we're advancing in our bridge knowledge to make decisions on competitive bits on where to go to and whether we should be competing at a three level or not okay because we know a lot more precisely what our defendant our, our partner has um also if once we're playing a forcing one no trump right we saw before how one spade one no trump two clubs two spades is a weak raise right? We can actually d define all of our bids much better, and, and uh, perhaps we'll have a little chart of how, how defined it can become at some point here. But in the meantime, let's just let's just give it a go. So um, I hope I have this set. It's been giving me some difficulties. We get a spade opening from um, from South, some dude named Ob Sugar, and Fred has four support. He has five eight points. Now, we would normally bid two spades here, but playing Bergen raises, we're going to make an artificial bid at the three level, okay? Which is four plus support, constructive. Remember, where constructive means basically seven to nine, seven to a bad ten, right? And then we bid three clubs. Okay. So this is a showing four and it's a constructive bid. Um, after this bid, if, if it leaves diamonds and hearts where our partner could make a game try, if he wanted to. Um, so if he bid hearts here, he would be saying, are you at the top of your range? Can you help me out in hearts? If so, maybe you could go to game. Um, we're at 6-8, kind of the middle. We have a flattish hand. We do have the king of hearts. Queen of ten, so we might help him out. We might say, "Sure, I'll go to go to four spades." Um, so we actually get some, you know, some action going there, and and I don't think this is going to make. I think Obi Sugar is far too aggressive. But let's take a look. Some action there. Like it's going to depend on a guess on the clubs, Ace Queen of Clubs. Um, uh, we do have, you know. Did have a seven card heart suit and we have a king queen so maybe we get some action there but notice the benefit of having those trumps right away right um uh, we, we we have a heart potential rough we can i mean we can still pull trump and have hearts left in dummies in the dummy right? which we've learned before that's one of the ways we get rid of our losers this one actually yeah looking at it will probably get hammered but as i said obi sugar was very aggressive there but just showing there was a way to continue on the game over this constructive bid with a with a game try suit obi sugar would have been wise just to bid three spades there um, we get a spade opening we get a lot of spade openings here this all applies to hearts as well with four sport you're probably not with four sport for spades you're I'm sorry, if your partner opens hearts and you have four spades, you're unlikely to show them those hearts with four support, right? Once you find a nine card trump suit, you should generally be happy. So nine points here in Fred's hand, and he has um, four of them. So he can bid three clubs. Again, this is artificial, showing a constructive hand and four support. And our partner will probably just pass out of three spades.
And the idea is that, the, that with this extra trump, we're going to have support here. Okay? And we're going to have we're going to have an extra chance of being at the three level. Lots of times we will keep them out of out of their own fit. Notice here that we only have four hearts between the two of us. That means they have a nine card heart fit somewhere, um, and they never got to it, uh, which may or may not have paid off. Maybe we would have set set a heart contract, but they never even got to bid it. Okay, so artificial showing. We'll do one more at this level. One spade, two, three, seven points with a stiff. That's enough to say we're constructive, especially since we have five spades. Robot thinks about it for a while. And uh, what does our partner do? He makes a game try. So he's hearts and spades um, and wants to know if we're at the top of a range. And we're really not. We have that stiff club, but, you know, probably don't want to accept this invitation. And uh, it passes out. So, so basically, we've given ourselves a lot, some information, important information that we can use in uh, making our decisions on whether to go to game or not. We know that we have that extra trump. This one makes a ton of tricks. Uh, Obi Sugar has done nothing but bid bad this morning, and uh, you'll never want to sit across the table from him. Uh, he's got a stiff club. Look how that plays out there. We have a stiff club, so basically we have a 30-point deck. All right, so now I'm going to now I'm going that's that's bidding at the constructive level, right? Now we can also do this at the um, invitational level. So now partner um, opens a spade. We get an overcall. Let's ignore that for now. If we wanted to invite here, by the way, we would bid three hearts. Okay, now our second bid in this sequence is here we have five, seven, eight, ten points. Not a really good ten points. Frankly, I would not make this bid um, with this 10 points. It's pretty crappy. But if you think this is invitational, you bid at the three diamond level, right? You bid another artificial bid. You have to alert these Bergen bids. And this shows invitational. Oops, how can I do that? Yeah, invitational, invitational, the four sport. So it's a limited bid. See, on all these hands, we're, we're giving really good information to our partner to use, right? This is an invitational with four support. And then he can sign off with three spades, or he can go on to game, depending on his hand. Um, our partner's been pretty erratic so far this morning. I don't think he's working very hard at uh, what's going on in that computer. But see, we get to four spades here. so. We've made an invite with four, four or more spades. All right, so we're gonna lose the ace of spades. King of hearts is out there somewhere, but the clubs are nice. And we got a couple diamond losers, and, uh, and once again, <laughs> once again, uh, we're going down. Um, but it, <laughs> this is not the best introduction to Bergen, but I think it, we could essentially blame our partner for it, which is always a comforting feeling when you're sitting at a table to be able to blame somebody else. So, um, one spade, 10, 11 points, right? Clearly invitational this time. Clearly invitational. I understand it wasn't really invitational. Maybe it was our fault we got into a bad game. Um, 10 points, 11 points though here with these two four nice card suits having those concentrated honors. And we have four support. So we bid three diamonds, an invite with four or more.
And from that information, our partner can go to four spades. I like this. I like our chances here much better. Yeah, hey, look at that. He led, led the jacks. So we take it with the queen. We promote our 10 and our 9 when the ace takes our king. Uh, spades, notice nine of them, and we're probably not going to lose any. And uh, a couple cult tricks, and uh, maybe the ace, maybe the king of diamonds, depending on where the ace is. All right, so we see we can have a constructive bid, or we can have an invitational bid, and we are showing four at the same time. Now, what about the opposite end of the spectrum? There, there we go. So this time, when we get a crap hand, right? We got four points, but we do have four spades, and our partner opens a spade. I don't want to do this one. I want to overcall yet. Our bids would mean the same though, but let's make a clear example. I can't believe you overcalled that club suit. It's a terrible club suit. I can see all the hands on the other computer. I just needed to make a movie, that's why. This one will probably get overcalled as well, yeah. Should probably just take a little time to... Uh, there we go. Doesn't have an overcall this time. One spade. You notice that the robot in left-hand seat is bidding, right? Because I have such a crappy hand, so the points had to go somewhere. Um, so one spade, I have two, three, four points. Really bad hand, right? But I have four spades, and that's meaningful to us, right? If my partner is on the weekend of his bid, right, the opponents probably have 22, 23 points, right? They may even have a game with a little bit of distribution. So suddenly we're in a defensive position, right? But because I have four, I can make a competitive bid here, which is to bid three spades, right? And this has to be alerted also now, right? And this is basically zero to six points. Right, zero to a bad six with four plus support. Okay. So this is the weak Bergen bid just by jumping to three spades here. And a lot of see they now they need to get in, right? Because they did. They probably have the majority of the points. There's a good chance they have the majority of the points anyways. And they're trying to get into the auction. But instead of getting in the auction at the two level where they would have been had I passed, they're getting into the auction at the four level. And that's not a very comfortable spot to be. Um, of course, I'll pass. Right? And now they bid four hearts. But four hearts has become a shot in the dark, especially since we have four of them. So three spades becomes preemptive when you're using these Bergen races. Ah, you're on lead. What do you want to lead? I think we probably should lead our partner suit. Son of a gun didn't even have the ace. All right, so um, I'll claim. I guess that's the only way for us to see all the hands. <laughs> We're going to set him. According to dummy, double dummy, we have a chance to set him four. So I'm going to claim that. Um, so we go plus 400. Because right? their heart suit is terrible. But we placed poor East in the position where he had to bid because we jumped to three spades with a weak bid. Okay, he ends up bidding. He bids badly. They, they go off 400 when we had nothing. So a preemptive Bergen bid at the three level is just bidding the suit. One spade or one heart. to Three hearts or three spades. Right? Raising a double raise becomes a... Um, preemptive bid. We often don't end up playing three spades or three hearts here. So they, sometimes they have to come in because they have the points. Um, five points here and five of them. Here you could actually just bid four spades if you wanted to preemptively. It's the same idea, right? But uh, if we bid three spades, they go, they'd come jumping in at four. And uh, our guy knows that. And of course, now you can. Now you are in the position where you can go to four spades if you really wanted to. 
Alternatively, you could have just bid four spades and then they wouldn't even know the lead. So we're in pretty good shape here. Look at that spade suit. And we got two, so we got six spades, two hearts. And at most we go down, at most we go down two. Um, they probably aren't, we're probably only getting one spade trick, if any, right? Because we have 11. Somebody's going to be roughing those fast. Uh, we get the ace and king of hearts, but we get nothing else. Right? They, they had four hearts cold. Right? Should have just bid four spades immediately. Let's try one more. I'm skipping through the ones where West has got Will all the college. Probably don't want to fool with the constraint thing anymore. So I'm just trying to make sure he doesn't get a five card suit here. All right. One spade comes to us. We have our four points, an ace, and that's it. I wouldn't upgrade the hand past week just because we have a stiff. So I bid three spades. Right. Promising zero to a bad six points. Um, and but promising four plus and our partner you know unless he has some incredible hand it's just going to pass it out and we buy it for three spades yeah. and look at the heart suit we have four that means they had a nine card heart suit and partner only has five six seven thirteen points and our four is 17 so they had 23 points and I know you've seen a lot of 23 point games not sure they have it here but, you know, you put the Ace of Diamonds and the King of Clubs in the right place, and then they get a couple of hearts, the King of Clubs and the Ace of Diamonds, and, uh, and may, in fact, get all the hearts. Right? So this, is, this, was, this was an excellent bid. And our chances of making aren't, aren't, aren't awful. We're not going down a lot if we're going down at all. So that's Bergen Raises. The idea is we're going to create some tension in the dynamics of the auction. Um, we're going to, with our weak preemptive bids, we're going to put the opponents on the spot. Um, we're going to increase our ability to compete for part scores because we're going to show four support immediately with either a constructive hand or an invitational hand. Right? So we're going to be competing for part scores and for games based on the way we show those. Um, Moreover, as it relates to play, as you're bidding, and you know I always say, bid to play, right? If you know your partner has an extra trump, you can think about what you could do with it, right? Right? I mean, do you have an opportunity to use it for roughing? Um, is it going to make it easier for you to set up a second suit in your hand? Um, as we get more and more sophisticated in your, your declare pay, you're going to recognize that having extra trump makes it easier to execute um, elimination plays, end plays that are based on stripping the opponents of all the other suits and forcing them to either give you a rough and slough or lead back into your tennis. So that's a Bergen race and I'm going to teach them here and you can just decide not to use them, all right? But you'll know them, okay? You can decide not to use them with anybody and you'll find people who love them and people who hate them. Um, also, you'll find people that will say, sure, I'll play Berg and Raises with you, but can we reverse what three clubs and three diamonds means? And uh, I won't get into why, but that's often a good treatment. Okay? They might say, well, let's, let's use three clubs as the stronger of the two bids and three diamonds as the constructive. But all of these are artificial, must be alerted. They're called Berg and Raises, and uh, they will have some value. And I think they're fun for beginners and intermediates, especially for advancing beginners. Um, I play them with my regular partners. I play them with maybe two or three of them. A lot of club players, are, you know, won't play them just because they won't play anything anyways. Um, a lot of tournament players, the better ones I play with, have just sort of outgrown them. Um, although they will have replaced the lower bid, right, the constructive bid, with a mixed raise of some sort. So you can still show four and mixed. Um, but those are the Bergen raises. That's what we're gonna we're gonna do major raises on um, on next Wednesday. Well, a bunch of major raises using three and four support, and we will just make sure we have a steady system. We know how we're raising our majors, and once we know that, we will gradually transition it back into two over one, maybe even next week, back into two over one bids, and then. For either one week or two weeks, we will be looking at slams, bidding slams, okay? Because after all, two over one is, gonna, is a souped up 
system that will allow you to bid slams. So I want you to have the tools to do it. Okay. It's going to be some stuff that you can use the rest of your life as well. Some really interesting stuff. All right. So, um, and hopefully before that class comes around, I will have finished the slam section in the class notes so we can really work on it. Okay. Until next time. Thanks.